The Gigabyte C790 Iris Elite AX is a mid-range motherboard built around Intel's Z790 chipset. Priced at $254.99 in Gigabyte's online shop, the ATX-sized board offers plenty of features including 4M2 sockets, 6 SATA ports, 2.5 Gbps Ethernet and Wi-Fi 6E networking, a budget audio solution, and power delivery ready for the latest and greatest 12th and 13th gen Intel CPUs. You can find Z790 motherboards for a little more or less, but the Aris Elite AX compares favorably with all of them. The Aris Elite AX is built on a six-layer PCB with a matte black finish. Large heat pipe connected heatsinks cover the VR MIS, while the M2 sockets and chipset have their own. The heatsinks sport a brushed aluminum finish with stenciled patterns and Aris branding. Some RGB lighting is hidden beneath the chipset heatsink, giving a bright, saturated glow inside your chassis. Overall, I like Gigabyte style. Supporting Intel's most power-hungry processors is a 19-phase power setup using 70 ASPS MOSFETs. The 1120A available for the processor can easily handle the flagship Core i9 to 13900K chip we used, even if you want to overclock. On the memory side, Intel's new Z790 and B760 platforms support both DDR4 and DDR5, which gives you an option to save a few dollars with the former. Assuming you want nothing but the best, the Aris Elite AX supports DDR5 at speeds up to 7600 MHz, which is average for this class. Your mileage may vary as reaching the highest speeds depends on the quality of the CPU's memory controller and the memory kit used. Stick with the QVL list, and you should be okay. As in other motherboard tests, our DDR5 to 5600 and DDR5 to 6000 kits were perfectly stable after setting the XMP profile. We also tried our DDR5 to 7200 kit, which worked by simply enabling XMP. If you want to overclock your memory, there are plenty of options in memory timings. At the upper left of the motherboard, we see the two 8 pinups connectors that power the CPU. Nearby are the large heatsinks tasked with cooling the VRMs below, topped with Aris branding, and some cutouts to increase surface area. We found the heatsinks did an excellent job keeping the MOSFETs and other power bits within specification. To the right of the socket area are four unreinforced RAM slots that latch the memory down on both sides. Above that are the first two of six 4-pin fan pump headers, each supports DC and PWM control devices and outputs to a 24 watts with plenty of headers putting up plenty of power users shouldn't have any problems running their system cooling including custom water loops or pumps to the right we find two of the board's four rgb headers dot there are two three pin argb and two four pin rgb headers with one of each type in each location control over the attached lighting is handled through the rgb fusion section of the gigabyte control center software working our way down the board's edge we spy the 24 pin at X connector that powers the board, a 19-pin front panel USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, and a front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C header. The bottom half of the board, on the left side, houses the audio section where the Realtek ALC897 codec hides below the Faraday cage, along with several audio capacitors. This board doesn't come with fancy amplifiers or DACs, or even the latest and greatest codec, but most buyers will find the solution adequate for their needs. In the middle are three full-length PCI Express slots for graphics and expansion. Past the chipset on the right side are Thunderbolt headers and six 6GB.PS SATA 3 ports. Along the bottom edge of the board, in addition to the second set of RGB and ARGB headers, are front panel audio and two USB 2.0 headers. The Q flash button for resetting the BIOS is next to four fan headers. Last is the front panel header to connect your power and reset buttons. The primary graphics slot uses reinforcement to prevent shearing from heavy cards, and protects against EMI. The slot connects through the processor and runs up to PCIe 5.0 x16. The other two full-length slots connect through the chip and run at PCIe 4.0 x4 and PSI 3.0 x4. Mixed in among the PCIe slots are M2 sockets. The top one with the largest heatsink connects through the CPU supporting up to 110mm devices, and supporting PCIe 4.0 x4. The other three M2 locations also support modules up to 110mm long, 
but they connect through the chipset while also peaking at PCIe 4.0 x4, 64 Gbps speeds, along with the six native SATA ports, the M2 socket support RAID 0, 1, 15, and 10 modes for additional speed or redundancy. Due to how the device is attached there is no lane sharing, and you can run all storage devices concurrently. The rear uses a pre-installed backplate with a black or dark gray background, with white port labels. We counted 10 USB ports, including a 20 Gbps Type-C port, 2 red 10 Gbps ports, 3 blue 5 Gbps ports, and 4 black USB 2.0 ports. The display port and HDMI video output sit in the middle, flanked by the 2.5 Gbps Ethernet port and Wi-Fi antennas. Last, the audio stack consists of two 1 8 inch plugs for microphone, and line out with an SPDIF output. Like most BIOS S, Gigabyte's Z790 Aris Elite Axe firmware starts in easy mode. Here you'll find a lot of info about the system, including the CPU, RAM, storage, and cooling. Several large buttons on the right give access to other features ranging from advanced mode to smart fan 6 and Q flash functionality. In all, the black and orange themed BIOS is easy to read and logical to navigate, though I wish it used page up and page down, so I didn't have to scroll through extended options. The advanced portion of the BIOS offers a standard configuration with major headings across the top, including customizable favorites, tweaker, settings, and system info. You'll find all the advanced functionality in this much more comprehensive mode. The tweaker section contains all the options to overclock your system. Here you can adjust voltages, RAM speeds and timings, and overclocking options for the CPU. Inside the settings section are several subheadings where you can adjust platform power, configure I.O. ports and see voltages, temps, and other data in PC health. Here you'll find options to enable or disable audio and integrated graphics, enable resizable bar, and configure USB, NVMe, SATA audio, and network hardware. The UEFI is logically laid out and easy to get around. The Z790 version, like its X670 counterpart, has a full array of tweaks including processor and RAM overclocking. Unlike on other BIOS S, you can't play with the RGB lighting from here but must use a Windows utility. Overall, the BIOS provides all the options you need, and our version F7B was stable in our time with the board. Speaking of software, Gigabyte's Windows-based control center provides monitoring of and control over RGB lighting fans and performance overclocking. It's a lightweight app that matches the black and orange Aris theme and pulls the system on startup for software and driver updates or downloads as needed. The screenshot below shows the landing page and all the hardware it can control on our test system. For motherboards, Control Center lets you fine-tune RGB's fan control and performance. The RGB Fusion software includes 8 LED effects including static pulse, flash, cycle, and wave, with options to change the brightness and speed of each effect. The fan control module has three canned options, plus the ability to adjust manually and make custom curves. The software detected all our test systems fans, PWM and DC alike, and controlled them without issue. Using the software to overclock the processor in memory is straightforward. There are drop-downs to select the CPU multiplier, as well as memory speed and voltage, 